Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. So, just want to show you this beautiful color here. This is Hot Orchid, and these are the new paints from Color Art. Now, these are just your, your regular acrylic paints that you would buy just the same as, you know, an Amsterdam or a metallic Deco Art 24 karat gold. Same thing, except they have triple the bling in them, and they are gorgeous. So this here is the Hot Orchid. Now, I will not be using this in today's video, but I just wanted to show you this color. There's four of them. Um, there's the Hot Orchid. There's a copper, a gold, and a bronze, but there are more coming out. So if you're interested in buying those or any of the primary elements that I'm using today, don't forget, I have a code to save 20% off. This is the burnished copper. I will be using this in today's pour, and it is absolutely luscious. You can see the body of these paints, and these are big 8-ounce tubs. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I just wanted to show you those really quick, but let's start the video. I have a lot to say and a lot to do. So first thing I want to say... If you're buying primary elements and it is coming with either polypour or enamel, both of these products work with uh, the primary elements. They also work with your tube paints. Now, I have a lot of videos that go from A to Z. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I've been getting a couple of questions People want to know what each are used for. So everything that one does, the other one can do also. And I'm going to try to explain this as simple as possible. The polypour, okay? Let's say you want to do a straight pour or um, a Dutch pour or whatever. You, you mix all of your paints, including your primary elements, into a little bit of this. Thin it out with some water and blow it out or tilt it, pour it, whatever you want to do. Okay, that's this. The enamel. Now let's say you want to do a Dutch pour or a bloom, whatever technique you want to do. You can also do that with this. It's a little bit thicker than this, so you would have to thin it down uh, for... I'll use the bloom technique for an example. To do the bloom with this, you would add a little bit of polycrylic to it and then some water and then pour. Again, all of your paints, except for obviously your base paint if you were doing a bloom. Um, the poly pour, you don't need to add the polycrylic in it to get it to bloom. You can just mix your primary elements into this Put them on top of your house paint that's the base and then put a little cell activator on top of it blow it out and it will bloom so but it's also important to know that that's not these are not only for pouring you can do um you can do gla uh painting on glass glazing you can paint brush with these They're, they have multiple uses that's all on colorart.com but so that's the difference. If you want an all-in-one that will make blooms or do any other type of pouring, you go with the poly pour. If you want to get the enamel, it's a little bit of a heavier, uh, thicker medium. You can thin it down and make it work for all of the techniques that you do also. I personally prefer the enamel because I like, it's a mental thing for me. I like to add in the polycrylic. I like to, because that helps thin it down, okay? Whereas this, you really don't want to add it into this because it's already thin enough. I like to get my paints to a certain consistency. Though, so that's why I prefer the enamel. But both of these will work for any of your techniques. You just have to have them mixed up the right way. Which, speaking of, a couple of emails I've gotten uh, regarding primary elements, and it looks like they're fading when they dry or they dry matte. Very important to know, 
24 karat gold by deco art any any paint that is mixed into a matte base it doesn't have a semi-gloss or a gloss base to it is going to dry matte my paintings look beautiful when they're wet and then when they dry they're very dull until i go and put resin or varnish on them then they come right back to life so paints no matter what the brand is they are going to dry darker and duller than what they are when they're wet um that's where the resin and varnish comes in it's not just to protect the painting it's also to bring it back to life fading colors do not fade the only time colors fade is when they've been dry and hanging on the wall and sun is beating on them for a very long time now if you do not know your chemistry and you're mixing something like a primary element into a house paint that has it's an untinted base but you don't understand how bases work that base may have titanium in it and it may be lightening your colors on you it has nothing to do with the product okay uh shelly uh from shelly art the bloom queen go watch her channel she uses a lot of primary elements in her videos and they work magnificent for her so <laughs> you know that if you're having a problem it's something that that you're doing you're mixing them into the wrong thing now whenever you have something that is two parts a and b just like resin you need the hardener and the resin for it to work primary elements are a two-part system so technically you should be using your primary elements with what they were created to be used with <laughs> um we have figured out ways of using them with house paints or uh different mediums but it's kind of like a, a substitute for the real thing okay so colors again do not fade they're just they're drying a little bit on a darker side and they need that resin or varnish to come back to life now if your paints are drying weird that is because they're there's they're too thick 99 percent of the time it's because it's too thick if they're cracking it's because your base is usually too thick or um your your colors all five out of all five four of them are the same thickness and then one is slightly off so that one dries faster and then the other ones dry slower and what happens i want you to think about this let's say your base is too too thin okay and your colors are just a hair thicker not much what happens is you your bottom paint starts to dry while these ones are still wet up here but they start to dry too not as fast as this one but these ones do so now when you're almost when this is almost 90 percent dry and these are 50 percent dry what starts happening is it starts pulling apart and that's where those cracks come in okay so consistency is a huge huge important thing to pay attention to so that's just a little couple of tips for today so again primary elements and um polypor and enamel they are a two-part system they should be used together but when you see people like me that use them in a house paint it could be confusing uh you just have to make sure you're using the right house paints now today my paints are mixed with vivid enamel and water-based polycrylic um I will put that in the description below and then that I have a little bit of water in there I will show you on a piece of paper the consistency of them but they're pretty thick and um, what I want to do is I want to show you the difference between a regular Dutch pour and a Dutch pour done with a bloom base because I did a Dutch pour video a normal Dutch pour and somebody asked me did you use any CA meaning cell activator in that and 
No. The only time that word should be mentioned, cell activator, is if you're using bloom paints or paints mixed with the bloom recipe. Any other time, if you have a straight pour, a dirty pour, a flip cup, a funnel pour, a swipe, most of the times you're using regular acrylic paint, no house paints at all, and it's mixed with Floetrol or pouring medium. Um, that's not to say you can't do those techniques with this bloom recipe though. So there's a difference, okay? So let me shut up and <laughs> let me get started. All right, so let me just show you how thick my paints are here. And I'm going to use a color that I have a lot of. So this right here is Permanent Violet Dark. You see how slow that's going? So those are the thicknesses of all of my paints, including my cell activator, because they all need to be the same consistency to avoid that cracking, okay? So the colors I'm using today, I already showed you the copper. I have primary yellow from Amsterdam. I have uh, ginger peach, is it? No, orange peel. Orange peel. One of my viewers asked me to do a fall theme. So that's what we're doing. This is orange peel, primary elements. Okay. Then I have black orchid. Love this color. Very, very pretty. And then you saw the permanent violet. Then this is an interference also by Color Art. This is the violet interference. So what this does is it doesn't add white to the painting. What it does is it adds a violet shift. And I will show you that when the painting is done, you'll be able to see it. And then my cell activator, I'm using teal. Okay, and for the teal cell activator, I used a tablespoon of Heavy Body by Golden, and I used a tablespoon of Fluid by Golden, and then I used uh, six tablespoons of Floetrol. Now, why did I use those two together? Why didn't I just use the Fluid one or the Heavy Body? I have, again, this thing, and what works for me works for me, and I don't change it. For some reason, I feel combining two different fluidities of paints into the cell activator recipe when it comes to a color, not the white or the black. If it's the white or the black, I use just white or I use just black. But for a color color, for some reason, I feel like it sells up better. You get more cells, all right? So I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to pour my white house paint onto the canvases, and we are going to start. Okay, so these are two level three gallery wrapped um, 14 by 14 canvases. And my vision is, is a Dutch pour that comes out from the edges only towards the center, uh, maybe a little bit lower down in here. So I'm going to place the paint in small puddles or small lines of paint, and I'm going to blow it out one at a time, okay? This I'm going to do on time lapse because it's very time consuming, and I don't want to talk when I'm trying to concentrate anyway. Okay, so here we go. So here we go. I've already applied white house paint to the base now per 10 ounces of white house paint i add one ounce of water to thin it out so very little water and i'm just i'm trying to be really careful with the blow dryer i don't want to blow it the this bottom portion way out 
because I want to end up with some negative space. So what I'm going to do along the bottom is I'm going to be carefully placing the paints in puddles, putting that blue cell activator on top and kind of just moving it a tiny, tiny bit with my blow dryer and then really coming in with the airbrush and, and really designing the way that it looks. Now this airbrush I absolutely love. It's in my Amazon shop. I think it's under $60. You literally plug it in. Um, you connect the hose to the airbrush and the other end of the hose to the little box. Press the button and you go. It's that simple. Very easy to use and I must say extremely addicting. I mean, it's very easy to overwork a painting with that thing, but uh, it, it just, it's a lot of fun to use. So I'm just working my paints along there and designing that bottom area, like I said. And then once I get done with that, what I'll do is I'll end up flipping these canvases around and then I'll really show you, you know, blowing that, the upper portion out with the blow dryer. The order in which I layered my paints, I put down the orange peel first, then the deep violet, then the interference violet, then the yellow, and then a little more of the deep violet. And then finally I topped it off with that blue cell activator, which was working like a charm, I might add. So I flipped the canvases around and now that I designed that bottom area, taking my time, I know how far I can blow that upper section out with the blow dryer without overdoing it with, I'm trying to leave a negative space in that center. And now you're going to see, like, I really get in there with that blow dryer and it just, it, it was working beautifully. Let's just say that. You know, I think it's important for me to say that because I do this for mental health reasons, that I like the experience of making a painting to be longer than what you see other artists do. You know, you can pour the paints down and you can blow them out and be done with it. I like using that airbrush because it just, you know, and besides the fact that it, it helps with those wispy ends and makes it look a little more fancy, it turns a five minute painting for me into a 45 minute painting. And that's 45 minutes that I don't have to think about any worries or anything. And it's just, you use your mind and your imagination a little bit more. And it's, like I said, it's not necessary. I just enjoy doing it for me. And it doesn't have to stop after this. I'm looking at this painting and I would love to take some resin and create a second layer of some wispy grass uh, floating up through those areas. So you don't have to stop with your acrylic pour when this part is over. Okay, my friends, I am done with this beast. <laughs> so as you saw, the, the top part, I wanted to go a little bit slower. I didn't want to blow the petals are out too far because they are, um, I wanted some negative space in the center. So that's why I did the little tiny puddles along the bottom. And then once I got to the other part, I knew that I could start pouring it on and really blow that paint out with the blow dryer. That's Miss Angelina Blow Lee for those that are interested. Uh, I'll put the flash on in a second. I just want to show it to you without the flash. Um, if you're interested in this piece, once it's dry, I will be showing it. Uh, it's going to be beautiful, especially when you see the colors with the lights off and then out in the sun because they are gorgeous. So if you enjoyed the video, 
please be sure to subscribe. Uh, like the video. That helps YouTube uh, know that you enjoyed the video and they will suggest it more to other people. You can also share the video. That also helps. Don't forget about my Amazon link in the description. If you use that to do your Amazon shopping, my channel gets credit. It helps me get supplies for the channel. And also, I want to say thank you to Jennifer for sending me the gloves. That was totally unexpected, and I am totally grateful for that. And I also want to thank Miss Lisa Wyatt Art for giving her my address. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. So here we are. These are the, the, how it looks with lights off. But then I'm going to show you it this way, which will look really different. You'll be able to see some of that interference violet right there and all the pretty colors. Love it, love it, love it. So anyway, now, do you see the difference? If you go back and watch my other video, the video before this, you're going to see I did a Dutch pour using Floetrol in all the paints. Now this right here, this recipe, the Floetrol is only added to the blue. And so you can see that wherever the blue goes is where the cells are going to be. So that is the difference. So it kind of laces around the colors. This is going to look amazing with uh, resin on it. I can't wait. Alrighty, my friends, that's the end of this video. If you are free and have some time to watch some of my other videos. I have over, I think, close to 400 videos, resin videos. Uh, there's a soap making video hidden in there. All kinds of acrylic pouring lessons, whether it be using glue and water. Just look through all my older videos and you'll see a ton of different things. Alrighty. I love you all. And... Happy pouring. All right, so this is a Dutch pour painting I did a couple of weeks ago. I haven't resined it yet. I want to show you. Now, that's 24 karat gold there. Do you see how dull it is? That's the first thing I want to show you. It will dry sometimes with a little bit of texture, depending on if the paint is too thick. But once you add the resin in, you're not even going to see this, Okay. Now I want the more important thing is for me to show you the difference in look. Now, do you see with this one, how the cells are not really tight and in, in clusters, they're more spread out. Um, you have little patches of them. Let's see. They're more bigger and not consistent, whereas with the Bloom recipe, as you just saw, they're really tight and in clusters. So you can see how dark my paints dried. Now this did not have, um, I don't think it had any primary elements in it. It may have had one. These were just regular acrylic paints and the base was white acrylic paint. Okay, so that's your normal Dutch pour. So let me show you now what it looks like once you pop the resin on it. So the second that resin hits the canvas, everything comes back to life. You're gonna see here in a second um, how shimmery that right panel is now that I've added the resin. And I will actually show you them side by side. You can notice that the right side is darker and more vibrant. The colors are more vibrant. You see that? So 
yeah, it, the varnish or resin definitely helps. And the texture is gone. You don't even notice it anymore. What I'm going to show you next is two compare or three comparison pictures. Two are of bloom recipe cells and one is of Dutch pour cells. The first two are bloom recipe cells. You're going to see how the cells are really nice and tight and bundled together. And then the Dutch pour, you're going to see all of the cells are just spread out sporadically. So that's kind of, I'm just trying to show you the difference between doing a Dutch pour with a bloom recipe and with a regular Dutch pour recipe. So this is the bloom paint. So is this. See how they're nice and tight together? Now coming up right now is the regular Dutch pour with Floetrol in all the colors. So I hope this video helped you guys. Until next time, happy pouring.